Hi there, welcome back. Well, as you probably noticed from the last video, I made a few mess ups on this uh, alignment. I couldn't get the uh, null center zero uh, meter to align properly. It was a bit of a hash up and I should have done a practice run. I didn't. So we considered the last one a practice run. And I think I've sorted out why I messed it up. I actually put the two resistors. First of all, I had 100k resistors and it says 200. Now I've got two, two, two by 220, which is closer to the real value. And I had the resistors across the X and the Z. And that's not what that drawing tells us. It tells us the resistors are across the X and Y. In other words, between the X and ground. And you put the one lead of the multimeter or the uh, center zero meter there. So now I've got it right. And as it happens, I'm going to just do a quick uh, realignment. And I've just been checking, you know, learned how to check things before I open my mouth. And it seems to have been pretty well aligned. But I'm just going to tweak it a little bit and just have a look at the meter. I've got the two meters side by side. We've got the center zero meter over here, which is going to give us that um, uh, discriminator uh, alignment. And I've got the voltmeter on there on DC volts on the 10 volt range. Now, the other thing I did wrong, I think, is I, um, when I cr critically decoupled this, this uh, coil, I think I overdid it. I think you're supposed to just bring it down a little bit. And as you can see, it came, went down a bit over there on that meter. It's probably enough. And now we'll do this for uh, this one here for maximum on uh, on the volts range. And as you can see, it's, it's just about there. There. Now this one here is the center zero, which as you can see is pretty centered. But now I can go either way. There we go. So I'm going to just center zero it. Exactly. There we go. So that one's done. Now I need to just critically couple this again. And it's hit a peak, I think. Yep. Yeah. Probably right there. And that's done. You see, so it's uh, not as complicated as all that. And even with this mess up I had, I seem to have got the just of it right and got this thing aligned more or less correctly. So we're, I'm just going to recheck those other three and we'll see if we've uh, got it close enough. So we'll do the same over here. Just a turn basically. And this is both to maximum on the voltmeter. Yeah, pretty much there. That's peaked. Now I'll just critically couple this. That's basically at a max. Now we'll do the last one, or the third one. Now both of these to max. And they were there. Critically couple it now. That's it. I'll just quickly check this one as well. This was all perfectly there. Oh, maybe I got a bit more out of that one. Now critically couple it. So that's basically it. So it looks like we've done the full alignment here. 
the uh, first life transformer inside the FM can, the second one, the third one, and then the last one which has the uh, discriminator transformer or the ratio detector transformer. And regardless of whether we have this thing aligned right, the other method I used seemed to have got it aligned pretty well. Now what we're doing here is we're checking this uh, balance, the voltage balance between the two diodes. Basically that's what we're doing with this. One of them has got to be as negative as the other one is positive, which is why you put this resistor across it and you're trying to get this to zero, and uh, which we've done. Now, um, the way I did it, because I couldn't get this thing to zero, is I tried to get the best sine wave that I could on the scope, which is basically what you're trying to do here. You're trying to get this thing to uh, detect um, on the right part of the curve, it's a lot of theory in there, but it, it makes perfect sense once you get into it. And the way to do that is to uh, try and get the best sine wave you can on the scope. And we got that. And also the other way to do it is to get it to reject AM as much as possible. So when you put an AM signal in here, uh, you and adjust that discriminator one to get the lowest AM. And we did that in the last one as well. So we got that right as well. Now we do have a uh, sine wave coming out here. Let me show you. I've got the uh, signal coming in. I've got modulation, FM modulation, on that carrier signal, the 10.7 megahertz. So it's a 10.7 megahertz carrier with a tone on it. And if I put the volume up, you can see it there. And it's all jumping around. Why? Because of this uh, meter that I have, the zero center or zero null, uh, center null uh, meter. It's actually in a sensitive part of the circuit. Now, if you can, if you look at that, you can see this thing jumping around. It looks like a decent sine wave, but it's got noise. Now, if I remove this meter carefully, so I don't zap myself. See that? There's my beautiful sine wave. And it's a very good sine wave. Now, if I go too high, I'm going to start hitting distortion, but that's distortion of the uh, of the actual carry of the actual signal the audio signal but it's a beautiful sine wave and that's exactly what we'd aligned for with that mess up that I did there so I got there in the wrong way but I got there anyway right that was just a short correction because I uh, I've been racking my brains here I racked my brains for some time I thought my mistake had been these uh, resistors instead of being 200k they were 100k it seems they didn't make that much of a difference. Um, they did, in fact, make a difference when I removed them, and it made a difference to the audio. And the reason is, again, the same reason that that noise was on that, um, on that sine wave over here. The actual um, meter that I had there was uh, connected to the Z point, and that Z point is very sensitive. And because I had the meters connected, I was getting noise pickup. So when I took those meet those resistors out, I took everything out, the reception suddenly went a lot, lot better. So I'm not going to test the reception again because I believe it's going to be exactly the same as it was. There was very little uh, change in, uh, in what I did today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, carry on um, the um, RF section. And I don't really have time to do that today. So I'm going to just leave this one very, very short. This was just basically a correction video. And I'll be doing the RF alignment on this. And for that, I need to connect my uh, ELV stereo, uh, stereo FM uh, generator. But uh, I want to do that carefully because, as I said, rushing this, <laughs> rushing. I didn't rush the last one. I just didn't really try it out first. And that was stupid of me. So my apologies. Thanks for all the suggestions and your help. It, uh, in fact, this idea came to me uh, from one of the suggestions to, you know, revisit what I'd done there. There are a few people out there that watch my videos and comment on my videos that, that have got a lot of experience, actually, with Sabas. And uh, you know who you are. <laughs> they know that these things can be a real bummer to, to sort out. And if you haven't done this for a while, or this particular type of radio for a while, it can get a bit complex when, in fact, it is actually fairly simple. If you think about it, what I did in the last video and got it aligned was using a different method, different to the one that they were suggesting here. So the result was exactly the same. 
and I just went about it a different way and got exactly the same result. So these radios are not rocket science. Um, they probably were in their day, but not today. As soon as you know when you know what you're doing, it actually all makes sense. The one thing I want to comment on is, or I want to mention, is one of the last videos that uh, X-Ray Tony B put out. And he's doing an alignment of, an, of a Marantz. It's a two hour, 15 minute video, I believe it is. And I've got to tell you, that is, for me, the ultimate course in FM alignment. It's a tuner, it's a stereo tuner, tuner, but he goes through the process of aligning that tuner like I've never seen before. He mentioned my method once and he was quite complimentary of it, but I've got to tell you, this thing is nothing compared to what he will teach you. And it's a teaching experience. These, it was for me a learning experience on the last video that he did. It's absolutely bloody amazing. It's the sort of video you should store somewhere and refer to whenever you have any doubts. That is the way it's done. This, this is peanuts compared to that. But anyway, I want to thank you for joining me with my peanuts and I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you back soon for the next stage of this video, of this uh, restoration. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.